All right, it's time for the P1110 tube swap video that we've been waiting for, for, uh... Oh... Well, if you're still with me, uh, here, here it is. So, I'm gonna go into the details first and where I got this tube and all that stuff. So, so bear with me while we progress into this video and actually get to the meat where we take apart the monitor, show what's inside, the process of swapping the tube out and all that stuff. First of all, to start it off, I had this monitor shipped over to me from my buddy in Michigan. It was just a Dell P1110, you know, same thing as what I got here. And he got this monitor from a guy who just didn't want it anymore. It's basically almost unused. The tube is in... Very good shape, to be honest. And he shipped it over, and it got drop kicked and destroyed and blew up in shipping. But the tube and everything survived. The case was just really, really, really... Yeah, so, I, I mean, that was really an issue. I mean, I just wanted the tube, so I, I, I guess that's okay. I mean, I'd like to have a backup case in case this thing ever just rots away. But you know what? I, it's great to have a tube, so... So I'll take what I can get. All right, so now to get to the reason why I'm actually deciding that I wanted to swap the tube in the first place. So when I got this monitor, obviously this tube is swapped from an IBM P260, and that thing was in a storage unit for God knows how long, and it's got a giant streak in the middle of the screen, and it has gashes all over the screen that are just like scattered about. I was somehow able to put up with it for like a year and a half, maybe two, I think, and it really sucked, to be honest. I, I, I don't know why I put up with that. And yes, I could have removed the anti-glare coating and I had a previous tube in this monitor that was like that but the contrast ratio suffered from the removal of the anti-glare and yes it was much brighter but the, the contrast ratio was awful and the glare was very, very bad. I, I really couldn't deal with it. I, I tried my best. So I decided to swap this other tube into it that was in that state, which wasn't the best, but I was still able to get by. But now that I had the opportunity to put this new tube into it, it's like, just why not, you know? So that's, that's why I did it. With that shit out of the way, it's time to go to the content where we actually dive into the tube, go through all that stuff. So without further ado, let's get to it. That was fucking quick. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we got these two screws here. We got to take these things out, and then we also are going to have these two clips on the top of the uh, bezel. I should also note that this is not like a tutorial you should follow yourself. I'm doing this for fun, showing you what it's like in the monitor. It might be a little bit informative, but I don't recommend doing the things that I do because I'm a little bit careless and I'm a bit insane, so you might die or get hurt if you follow exactly what I'm doing. Make sure you read up on how to do this shit so you don't hurt yourself and all that stuff. Just use this video as entertainment and also just, you know, enjoy what it's like working on these bastards. Uh, we got these screws here on these uh, heat, sh heat shields that the boards are on and stuff. They're all over the place. Got it right there and that one too. Those two on the bottom and fog and so. Gotta take them out. I'm gonna start with taking off the top by removing these screws first can go in whatever order you want. I just thought I'd do these just because I felt like it. I should also know that these screws are the same length and size and all that stuff, so you don't have to worry about assorting them in a certain way. You just dump them all in a bowl or whatever and just put them back in whatever order you may please. It's really nice. Sony was kind of generous with that, I, I suppose. Uh, when you take that off, I'm going to dump that in the little case right there, and then we got this stuff to work with. It's very beautiful looking monitor we got cables on the flyback deflection board and all that stuff so we're gonna get to that and there's our power supply i'm obviously narrating over this because duh and that's our funny anode cap so i'm gonna discharge it right now i'm gonna put a thing on my little flathead and i know it's scary but watch this i'm gonna pull it off and wow i didn't die i didn't actually die amazing then i'm gonna stick my screwdriver on to get rid of the charge in the tube. Look at that, I didn't die either. Super easy, just make sure you do that because if you, you know, don't discharge it after a while, even if the anode cap is off, the tube can build up some charge and you might get a little bit of a shock, so just careful of that. Um, this is me removing the power supply, taking off the cables after I just removed the screws like you saw right there. Just four little things on the top and then it's gonna swing right off. It's very convenient. And then you got these two little clips on the bottom which I didn't show because, of course, I didn't. And then we got these uh, this little clip on top of the yoke for the anode cap, and then we got some cables right here that we got to remove as well to get in there. It's a little bit dusty, by the way. I'm glad I, I cleaned this off. And these screws here, these little screws. 
And then these cables, we gotta remove these screws because we wanna get that deflection board out of the way so we can obviously get in there a little bit more. So I'm gonna take that off. And then we got a shitload of cables all over this board that we gotta remove. It's a pain in the ass. Got that right there and those. And we also have those little little thingies right there. And then we got those ribbon cables as well as that little cable on top of it. And then that little cable hiding behind that heat sink. Uh, heat sink? Heat sink? Uh, I, got, <laughs> I got that removed though. Uh, I didn't want to do it on camera because it's just a giant pain in the ass. And then we got this stuff to work with. I removed the neck board from the actual tube, like the actual you know, socket. There's also that little plastic thing that has the focus wires. You're going to want to remove that too because you're going to get the tube out of there. And I'm going to move the deflection board with the flyback out of the way. And this is what we got so far. Pretty good. Pretty good. And then look at this shit, right? Look at these fucking convergence strips look how much they put on here and i, I i'm going to show the photos later because the convergence isn't even that good on this tube and i've worked my ass off to make it good and it, i just i can't so and this tube must have been a pain in the ass of the factory um but this is the rest of the neck board that i'm going to be taking off just a couple more screws and with that got these two little guys right under here just want to remove those as well and it's super easy once you do that, it's going to be able to come off. So it'll be wiggling around. You got to take this cable off. That's for the second input. And then we also got this ribbon cable. I'm going to take that out as well. Uh, and then you're going to want to take this 24 pin looking ass thing off the yoke. And then these cables off the little control board that has like your EEPROM and all that stuff that stores the OSD settings. And then with that, you can take that stuff out. And there's also this little thing that I forgot to take out, so I'm going to yank that bastard out. And then, once got that, I'm just going to place it right down there with all my stuff. And then there's this little, like, grounding thing, I guess. I don't really know what this thing is called, but you just take that out, just push a little pin down with a flathead. And then, pretty much good. Just going to let it sit there. And now it's time for these things. These things suck ass. These are obviously the giant screws that hold the tube itself with the bezel into the chassis. And it sucks to remove it. But after you do that, this is kind of what I got working with. It's like the shield and stuff. Once you remove those screws, you can just take the bezel off. But don't just yank it out. Because when you do that, you're going to want to angle it down. Because you're going to notice that the OSD buttons, you know, like the little front panel stuff, is going to be connected with this header. So you just want to take that out because it's a very small cable. So there's a good chance if you just pull it out, you're going to yank that cable and probably break something. But this is the tube here. It looks very hot. Very attractive. Um, it's very nice looking when it's naked. Um, so this is the these are the cables. Looks like spaghetti and all that shit. A lot of stuff going on. It looks very overwhelming, but it's not really that overwhelming because a lot of that stuff is just where the cables are. You don't really need to touch them. You just need to plug everything back in. That's the old tube right there. We're just gonna take a good look at her because she's probably not gonna be used much anymore. Maybe later. Maybe later when. Some tubes start dying out and we can use her and shit, but that's the uh, label right there, M50LRB15X, that's our little pins, and this is the tube put back in there, that's from the new one, I put the old tube in the monitor, so now with the new tube in there, obviously I didn't show it on camera because that's a giant pain in the ass, I'm not going to do that, but it's in there now, that's the old tubes just sitting right there, I'm just going to leave her be. But with this, we're going to connect all of our cables. We're going to get this whole thing back together. So, we'll get to it. Here we go. So, plug your shit back in. Got the control board in there again. Plug those cables. Put the little one in there. The yellow one as well. And then this cable. I'm a dumbass and I thought this is the right one. It's not. Put that one in. The good thing is about these cables is that they're actually intentionally designed like fit in the right spot, so you can't really plug the wrong ones in. Um, fuck. I can't get this thing out. So, this is dielectric grease. I'm gonna reapply it. Just make a nice seal so there's no high voltage that leaks out. I'm gonna make you uncomfortable as possible by using my finger with no glove on or anything right next to the anode cap hole. I hope this really upsets you and makes you really scared for your life and all that stuff, but here's everything plugged in. Looks very clean. I dusted it out a little bit as well just because I might as well do that maintenance while I'm in there. And here it is. It's super cleaned up. There's no thousands of convergence strips. All the boards are back in there, back in place. 
Everything's all connected, screwed in for the most part. I just kind of have it somewhat open in case I need to plug something in or get in there again if it doesn't turn on properly or whatnot. But she was good. So, tube swap was a su fuck. So, tube swap was a success. It was all good, all good to go. So, we put the ass of it back on, and now she's back on the desk, and we're going to take a good look at her. course gonna use this as an excuse to make another content montage because it's let's be honest it's the best part of these videos uh, i have a lot of stuff coming up i got a lot more plans just want to get this video out of the way it took a little bit of time to make this video and it was a little bit inconsistent here and there but hopefully it's a good documentation of you know what it's like to swap a tube out on like a pretty high-end crt monitor such as this one uh but i'm not gonna blabber for too long currently making like a new site as well i'll link that soon probably like the next video that comes out but yeah here we go this is the uh, montage, thanks for watching and all that shit, I'll see you soon.